<laughs> to the six-member boy group Infinite in their 2014 B-side release called Diamond. The lyrics for this song are about a broken love story that is like a diamond. Precious, beautiful, and everlasting. It is composed by Yi Ji, Zheng Wan Gu, and Mengi. Cool. cool. I love Dong Wu's haircut from like this picture. Good haircut. Woody. Three, two, one. Strings piano equals dramatic. Like, woo, chords. set the mood. <laughs> yeah. Right off the bat. Whoa. Totally, they're like, it's like two, five, and then like, oh, that sharp key change back. Oh, that piano, that's hot. I want to learn that. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> There's definitely some jazz in these chords. Jazz chords. Ninths, sevenths, elevenths. <laughs> yeah. You saw that coming. At me and one of my exes. Modal mixture. Hella. What? Ooh, ooh, ooh oh, jazzy. Know. That's good. It's very like bluesy. Is it like a blues scale? I feel like it might be. I don't know. See, there's a. It goes into E flat. Which is like the relative key, but kind of. Like it doesn't feel obvious. But then when it goes to C, it's much more clear. You're like, wow, resolution. <laughs> is that a fucking bass drum? <laughs> Boom! Really thundery bass drum, yeah. too. Oh my God. I feel like it's, they're all like kind of. Because there's more vocals underneath the cellist voice, it feels fuller and it feels more equal with the larger dynamic of piano and strings together. Like it feels fuller and it fits better now. Oh, uh, uh, oh, get ready, it's boom, coming. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, listen to the strings go. I almost wish that they had like some drums <laughs> or a gospel <laughs> clap. That's what I'm gonna say. Like a, I don't know, like a big choir in the back or like. Yeah, know. it feels like churchy in a way. Like, All right, take me to church, baby. Take me to church, sung you. Oh, oh, the piano's doing some crazy cool things. Oh my god, the bass drum. More K-pop songs need bass drum. And then there's the blues okay. section. Just that, that lick right there is so Motown. Oh, the suspense. Yeah, I really dug that. I really thought that they, um, they did a pretty good job of kind of pulling off power ballad without like something a little more percussive. A lot of it was just uh, where they were accenting, accenting in, in their phrasing, like like it was just, and it just kind of kept rocking forward and forward. Like I think they they definitely used a lot of repetition, but like it didn't feel like they were knocking me over the head with it. And also all the like the strings in there was like straight out of Motown, and especially the and it was, was kind of like a like a Mixolydian thing, and then like. 
the piano was like doing some serious like rock bluesy thing. Yeah, it's all from that kind of 60s era. I thought they sounded really good though. And they're great singers. Midi strings though? I couldn't tell. I feel like it is. And if it is, then this would be the first time that I actually liked midi strings. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I'd have to go back and listen to it. But I don't know. I, I didn't. If they were midi strings, they were good. There was like a good patch. Because mm-hmm. like it didn't feel super like tenny. And like, or I guess like it didn't lack depth. Yeah, it gave me that like, you know, like, like the Three Kingdoms. Yeah. Right. Like you know, it gave me kind of that Three Kingdoms vibe yeah. with like with the Age of War. Oh, whoa! Yeah. And then just like soldiers are marching uh-huh. in and like oh, stroking their beers, thinking about how they could destroy their brother <laughs> from across the across the across the landscape. But then you get you get this blue scale coming in. It's such a such a vanilla way of going to blue well, scale because you start with C, key, key of C, and then da di da 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 di da. You also like, kind of have the Pink Panther esque type of like mystery detective noir film yeah. like a noir film jump bum done also the rhythm's like padam padam yeah exactly padam. so it's dadim padam mm-hmm. dadim 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 so you kind of have that syncopation that really sets it very close to the end of the beat and then to the next downbeat or mm-hmm. for you guys it's this way so yeah it's like it gives that very mysterious vibe because you don't know when it's gonna land yeah and then when it lands you get this bass strum you're like oh wow the vastness uh-huh. of it uh-huh. And then the way they inflect the phrases, it just soars up into the sky. So this is majestic and like, yeah, vastness of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was interesting because it just created this big picture. Yeah. And on the theory level, we have the song that's basically technically in C minor, mm. but every resolution is C major. Da-dee-dum. There's like... There are a couple of C minors I caught during the song, but they, those were only like transitional chords. They were in the That's more cool. places with more frequent chord changes. Yes. But whenever the C minor matters, whenever it tonicizes, it always goes into the uh, parallel major or the mm-hmm. Picardy third major, want C major. And I think the song is really cool, really special. I love that song. That's definitely going on my playlist. Like I love when like. The bass drops for like one beat and it was like bass drum like it felt like an orchestral piece where like the bass drum is like that's there now you know and like the string part like I love the like little like high note low note thing like da da you know you know what I mean right Mm -hmm. and it was just kind of like it felt like it was skipping or like it felt like a person was kind of stumbling like an irregular kind of motion Mm -hmm. maybe it was like looking back on your lost love or something. Mm-hmm. I thought the instrumentation was nice. I thought the choice of chords and the choice of kind of techniques that they used in the song was nice. But I don't know. I just wasn't. I wasn't digging it for some reason. Now, there was also like when I was like making faces and like doing this with my hands. I, in certain sections, I literally could not figure out what the meter was. Like there was like a really confusing, like not in a good way, confusing bit for me where I was like. I don't know what's happening here. So like what's cool is it, it was kind of like this very slow crescendo, um, but also the the musical, the uh, shit, what do they call it? Uh, like musical space or whatever. Like the musical world itself was really vast. And like, I wanted to like dwell in it. Like you wanted to sit in it. All of the timbres, it was really interesting. Uh, I guess what you could say is like like all the articulations with the strings and everything, all the articulations are soft. They're not exact, right? So I don't know why, but it makes me want to just like, yeah, like, like float and kind of like, oh, this is interesting. Uh, and then like the, the voices like juxtapose that kind of nicely. Yeah, I thought that was interesting, especially the crescendo, because the crescendo at the end wasn't like too like annoyingly over, over yeah, melodramatic it was just like a nice like punctuation on it that was surprising cool yeah as much as i was knocking it as far as being like repetitive but it's like it's more of like a it's more of, no it's more of like a i would say a contemplative i like the way you put it like you know sitting you know sitting in this world it felt very like the, the uh, i don't know what the chords were but the whole bah, 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 this gets you like thinking and it's almost as if like you know when they're singing it's like this is their their thought process happening during like you know, oh, yeah. T- yeah, it's like this is their it's thought. kind of like the ruminating. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because it, so it's like because it's like you know the, the lyrics are like pretty like pretty pointed as far as like you know he's like lamenting and it's like he's just really sitting you know sitting on top of like this this little thought space 
just like you know giving us his life yeah or their lives because it's like they're just like you know bouncing around but it just feels like you know there's a thought on top of that like i think you put it really well this this world just a contemplative world. I mean, it, because it's like you don't want too much going on or else it takes away from the thought and we're not thinking about what they're saying yeah so by keeping it an interesting repetitive you know it's like an interesting like it was I, I felt it was like overall pretty interesting like not like some of the repetitive stuff where we were like okay well there was a point like it was yeah. deliberate it wasn't like a copy Probably. and paste kind of thing it was just like an active it was a conscious decision like a choice it was a choice yeah and it was so. cool because there were also like all those little riffs of the like da 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 Da, 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 da. <laughs> decorations, if yeah. you will. You know? Ooh, uh, embellishments. Yeah. But, yeah. That's cool. Hello everyone, I'm Umu, React to K channel creator, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed or learned something from it. If you'd like to support us or help React to K grow, you can do so by visiting our Patreon and help us out by pledging any amount you can. Till next time.